Hi, Ray Moran here with the V20, talking today with Ben Elder, and we're thrilled to have Ben with us. He's the global leader of valuation for RICS, chairs the IVSC Tangible Asset Board, and one of the leaders of the V20 movement. Ben, welcome. Uh, hello, it's always great to see you. You know, it feels like after last year's successful V20 event in India, V20 Brazil is rolling right along with some great panelists, speakers, and organizations uh, coming on board. What gets you most excited about V20 Brazil? Uh, thanks, Ray, and thanks for, uh, for having me on the uh, on the show again. That's really great to be uh, part of this uh, this initiative because. It is a really, really important initiative, this, to raise the profile of the valuation profession. Uh, we'll probably come back to that as we have a, a conversation today. But uh, th th that process of the professions coming together, uh, the valuation professions coming together as, uh, uh, a, a, as one voice, uh, which really raises that profile of the important that we provide uh, to decision makers and that collegiate approach is very very refreshing um, uh, that we are valuation professional organizations from around the globe but we can unite underneath the international valuation standard uh, in the recognition that our clients um, better decision making all hinges on uh, us providing information into the marketplace which is understandable and our clients don't have to spend a long time trying to interpret between different standards um, uh, 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 at the moment we've just finished the cricket um, uh, World Cup uh, and, and we're now into the various football combination uh, competitions and um, it's quite interesting when you think about those sporting events that the only reason they can take place uh, internationally is because there's a set of rules that everybody understands and plays to. We don't tell um, which team how to play their tactics because they play to their strengths of the people who are involved in that part of the, uh, of, of the team. Um, but having the consistent rules within which to play allows that, uh, that competition to take place. Uh, and I see, I see the valuation profession as part of that coming together under a consistent set of rules, which then allows the VPOs to compete between themselves on service uh, to their members and etc. But being able to make sure that cross-border valuations are consistent, um, transparent, reliable, um, which all supports the... Um, uh, the reputation of the profession, which is absolutely vital to trust and confidence. Uh, that very well said, Ben. And you mentioned rules and standards, which reminds me that you're moderating a very interesting session of the role of international and local valuation standards with some terrific panelists from leading VPOs around the world. Can you tell us more about that session and some of the panelists? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, really excited to be involved in that and quite an honour to be uh, moderating it uh, and, and looking at some of the, the, the people involved and their commitment to uh, the profession. Uh, it is quite humbling to uh, think that they are actually all coming together to uh, try to progress the V20 initiative. Um, and we've, we've, we've got uh, Mario from the Brazilian a ABNT, um, we've got uh, Lana from the uh, ASA uh, and Robert from, from UPAV and, and all augmented by Nick Talbot from the IVSC. So some great local but also international um, perspectives that we can draw on in that conversation. And I think, again, that's one of the things that um, excites me most about the V20 is um, uh, through, through, through my um, experience in the valuation profession. It's very often seen that there are international standards which are really, really important, they're great, but they don't work here. We're different. Uh, and we've got to get that message across that international standards are international standards, but international is everywhere. It, it, it is everywhere, and so you, they've got to apply in the local markets just as much as they have in the international uh, market, because that's how the confidence grows. 
and being able to have those those great ambassadors for the valuation profession with slightly different perspectives coming together to share their experience uh, and their knowledge about delivering high quality transparent valuations that clients respect and trust is really exciting and maybe I'm a little sad to get excited about uh, valuation issues but uh, I certainly uh, see them as um, aiding and abetting and, and, and supporting everything that happens from providing schools for children, for transport, for energy, um, uh, everything that happens. There are valuations which take place at various stages of the delivery process. Uh, and we should be mentally proud that we have that critical role in delivering services to, uh, to, to industry, to decision makers. And ultimately, that's what about the B20 is about, is trying to build that uh, recognition for the valuation profession to support G20 activities. Uh, very well said, Ben. You know, over the course of the two-day conference, we have many great uh, tangible assets and business valuation sessions. Which other ones pique your interest? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Probably the ones around some of the technology and some of the AI issues, which um, which are really uh, uh, cutting edge at the moment, and we're not quite sure as a profession how to deal with these 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 changes. And um, I, I, I think that that is is going to be a really great session with some great uh, contributions, but also some great questions from the audience, uh, because we're all experiencing slightly different things. And um, whilst it can be scary. Again, I think that the valuation profession has got to embrace uh, AI and te technology changes uh, to see them as a tool to help us provide even better service to our um, to our clients and not be scared about their implementation. The other ones which uh, really uh, I'll, I'll be uh, in the front row on are, are around um, diversity and inclusion um, and some of the uh, attracting the next generation of valuers into our uh, great profession. Um, and then uh, the, 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 the ones which will look at the data and the inputs which come, come through. So uh, some really great sessions to, uh, to look forward to in, uh, in Brazil in uh, a few months' time. Yeah, I totally agree, and I think embracing technology and data are really going to help attract a younger group of uh, valuers into our profession. Uh, so exciting. You know, beside the conference, we also have the summit, which is focused upon the leading valuation organizations and the regulators. Well, what is the ongoing goals and objectives of the summit, Ben? Yeah, I think, again, a, a really good um question to bring out uh, Ray for the for, 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 for understanding the whole purpose behind the V20 uh, the V20 uh, uh, was initiated last year um, through uh, uh, meetings and summits in, in Delhi in India and and these meetings follow the G20 presidency so uh, last year it, the, the G, G20 presidency was held by India uh, it's moved to Brazil, and that's why the conference and summit are being held in Sao Paulo the, this year. Next year, it moves on to South Africa um, and then on to the US. So uh, we are working alongside the G20. And the initiative is to try to get valuation recognized as an expert working group within the G20 structure. And what that would mean is that we as valuers could play a proactive role within the decision making of the G20. Uh, so we would be supporting all the activities that the G20 undertake um, with valuations which are based on the international valuation standards, uh, which creates that consistency, that benchmarking, uh, and I would say that better decision making by the uh, the G20 in its entirety. So the summit is there to um, formally take forward the initiative from Delhi. In Delhi, we agreed that all the valuation professional organizations from the G20 countries would support the initiative. So that's taken place. We've now 
uh, been working for another 12 months uh, to put in place the follow-up sessions and the summit um, at the B20 will be to re-engage and make sure that the VPOs from the G20s are still in full support of this idea of the expert uh, working group for the G20. Uh, so I envisage coming out of the Sao Paulo summit a further declaration which says that we will continue to work with our South African colleagues uh, to develop the next phase of the um, uh, acceptance process for B20 within the G20 structure. So it's really the formality side, uh, Ray, that, that that is. The conference is the intellectual exchange side. The summit is the more formal uh, recognition of the process which we have to follow to get full recognition of the B20 within the G20. And I guess probably the final comment on that is how important I see that as raising the profile of the valuer and the valuation profession to the highest levels um, and making uh, the regulators cognizant, aware of the importance of that valuation process um, for decision making, but also for them reflecting back on benchmarking to see whether projects have been successful. Um, so uh, that that summit is a, 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 I see it as equally important as the actual conference, if not. It might be more important, actually. It's exciting to see the additional valuation organizations getting involved this year, either actively participating or observing uh, with the goal of getting everyone actively involved. That's wonderful to see on a global basis for our profession. Ben, great conversation as always. Any final thoughts you'd like to share with the audience? I, I, I just think that... Um... I think a great deal of thanks is due to um, all the people who are putting in time and effort to make this this happen. There's an enormous amount of work which is going on in the background, um, both logistically for the conference and the summit. Uh, but the the ideas and the, um, the the great atmosphere which is actually being generated by the V20 organisation in itself, and the enthusiasm which is being embraced by all parties uh, it's hard work We're, we've had to make some fairly difficult decisions um, we've had to spend a lot of time engaging with different parties um, but the support and the uh, camaraderie of, 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 of the working groups have been absolutely fantastic and uh, I really enjoy that process and to see tangible outcomes at the end uh, and this whole project moving forward is very, very rewarding. Uh, and I would encourage anybody who's uh, listening to this and they want to find out more um, or take part. It's not a closed shop. We are uh, really enthusiastic to embrace as many people into this process as possible. Um, so please reach out if there are um, uh, organizations or people who would like to find out more about the V20 You'll be more than more than welcome. Very well said. Ben, a pleasure as always. Looking forward to seeing you in Brazil in a short period of time. Absolutely. Approaches very rapidly. So um, looking forward to it, Ray. And thank you for your support and uh, help during the processes. A absolutely. A pleasure.